I'm Molly, and I'm joined by my son, Rafe, who is eight. Well, Rafe, this property or definition is one that is frequently confusing to people. Um, and the property is stated as the definition of negative exponents. And what it says is if we take a variable or a number and raise it to a negative power, it's the same as writing it as <clears throat> it's reciprocal 1 over a to the positive n power. Or another way to state it, if we have a quotient a over b raised to a negative exponent, what that negative exponent is actually flips or takes the reciprocal of the fraction and raises it to the power, the power of positive n. Okay, so that's the basic property. Now that may not be enough to convince you that this property actually works. So we're going to ask the question, actually we're going to answer this question, does it work? To answer the question, I've looked at some graphs to help convince you that this actually will work. Okay, so now, have you been studying graphs in your class at school? No. Not these type of graphs. Not much. Okay. Because you're really, what grade are you in? Third. Third grade. So you really wouldn't be looking at graphs like these yet. But I still think it's going to be valuable for you to see. Okay? So we're going to look at a linear example. Now, what do you see here on the screen? What's this right here? This uh, purple? Yeah, it's a line, right? Okay. That's why we call it a linear example. That means line. Now, the equation that I used to graph this line is y equals 2 divided by x to the negative 1 power. That does not look like the equation of a line to me that has uh, you know, a negative exponent for one thing, and it has uh, a quotient, 2 divided by x. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the equation of this line in another way. We're going to use slope. So the equation for a line always includes the slope, which is rise over run. We found a rise of 1 here and a run of 2, which gives me a slope of 1 half. Um, so that would mean that the equation would be y equals 1 half x. But I could also write that as x over 2 to the positive 1 power, which is the reciprocal of 2 over x with a positive 1 power. So that supports the property or the definition of negative exponents. So that's some uh, support. Now what we're going to look at is a nonlinear example. And the one that I chose was y equals x to the negative 2. Okay, And this uh, kind of looks like it should be a parabola if I'm thinking squared. But this negative exponent gives me something else when I graph it. And I, I use Sketchpad to graph it, so I know the graph is right. but um, as I'm looking here over in the table, I can see that an entry of 2 would give me about 0.24, which is like close to 0.25 or 1 fourth. So as I look down here, I'm just going to go back to that point. Around 2, see here in the table, it shows me that 1.99 is at a 0.25, which is 1 fourth. So if I'm looking at that and thinking about that, I'm thinking... If I put in a 2 for x, so 2 to the negative 2 equals 1 fourth. If I use the property of, or the definition of negative exponents, which says that if you have a negative exponent, you take the reciprocal, which is 1 over 2, and then you raise it to a positive 2, which would be 1 over 4. So that is... That does um, verify what I was looking at. Now, if we graph the um, the, the uh, inverse of this, or the, I'm sorry, the reciprocal, we will see that it is actually the same graph. So here's the nonlinear equation, and this equation is um, one over x quantity squared. So what it did is it took the reciprocal of x, which is 1 over x, and raise it to the positive power. So that does seem to support the property or the definition that we're looking at. 
So now the question becomes, how does it work? Okay, so we're gonna do another example. We, we looked at a few, we're gonna do another example. So I'm gonna start with um, x to the negative three. And I'd like to rewrite this using the definition of negative exponents. So Rafe, as you looked at this, do you, can you think of anything to do if I have a negative exponent? No. Yeah, it looks kind of confusing, doesn't it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look back at the property and see that if I take a number to a negative exponent, I need to write 1 over, and that was actually just a little pencil mark. I didn't mean to do that, but 1 over x to the... And look, the n was negative here, but it became positive. So if the 3 is negative here, what should it be here? It should be a positive. It should be a positive 3. So x to the negative 1, or I'm sorry, x to the negative 3 should be 1 over x to the 3. Huh. Okay, let's try one with, um, we'll try one with a fraction that has um, numbers in it. Okay, so we'll try um, 2 over um, 3 to the negative 2. Okay, so we've got a uh, fraction, 2 thirds, right? Mm -hmm. And we have a negative exponent, a negative 2 as an exponent, right? So applying the, the rule, look, A was on top, B was on bottom. What happened? You switch it around. You switch it around. I say flip. Okay? So I'm going to flip it upside down, and I'm going to have 3 on top and 2 on bottom. And then I'm going to have a positive 2 for a power, right? Okay, now we're going to have to use another property that we used earlier. And when we had a fraction or a, you know, a quotient raised to a power, we had to distribute that power, didn't we? Yeah, so we'll have to say it's... 3 squared over 2 squared, which is 9 over 4. Yeah. Okay? And remember, when we did this before, we got 4 ninths. So obviously, we flipped it upside down by using that negative exponent, right? Okay. Now, I think we should probably check this and just see if we calculate these values, um, you know, what will they be? So what we're going to do is... Um, just work on a little calculation. All right. So if I take the calculation of have some pounds here. If I calculate um, two divided by three to the, and I'm going to use a negative two. Whoa! Told me eighteen. Actually, that doesn't look right because, as you can see, I did not end my parentheses correctly. So now I'm going to see if it gives me... Okay, so that's that's actually the right answer right there. 2.25. Okay? Now I'm going to do the same calculation using um, the, the other rule. Okay? Using the definition and flipping it over. So what I said was that if I flip it over, it would actually be... 3 over 2 to the positive 2, okay? Are they the same result? They are the same result. So that means that um, the rule works, doesn't it? Yeah. Right? Yeah. It worked. Okay. So we've actually proven, or well, I guess, I don't know if we've proven it, but we certainly validated that this definition is a good one, okay? Now, can we try one with mixed numbers and variables? Because sometimes they mix the variables and the numbers up, and it does get harder, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yep, it does. Okay, so let's try one. We're going to do 2x over 3y to the negative 2. Okay, so this is related to the problem we did in the other podcast. Um, we did power of a quotient together. Right, Rafe? Mm -hmm. Yep. So now we're going to do this property. I'm going to look, first of all, at the negative exponent. Okay, I've got a negative 2 
which to me right away I'm thinking, oh, negative exponent, I'm going to have to flip this buddy over. Yes. So I'm going to flip it over, and I'm going to write what on top? 3y. 3y on top, and what on bottom? 2x. 2x on bottom. And now, does the power change? Um. Yeah, it has to be positive now, right? So it's going to be a positive 2, okay? Now, again, I have to distribute that power. We talked about that in the other podcast. We have to do 3 squared and y squared, and we're also going to have to do 2 squared and x squared. So as I rewrite this, okay, I'm going to write 3 squared, mm -hmm. y, y squared. squared. What else, Rafe? 2 squared, uh -huh. x and squared. x squared, okay? And so as I rewrite, yeah. 9 y squared, and what on the bottom? 4x squared. Okay, so it's actually exactly upside down from what I was doing in the other podcast. Yeah. Huh. That works. Not too bad, huh? Okay, so are we done with the podcast? Mm -hmm. Okay, should we say goodbye? Yeah. Okay, say it. Bye. Bye.